Judges preaching the gospel in public Reaching the masses, jumping Bible is all that we touching Esau be lynching Had us in slavery, gotta get vengeance All these codes they be simping Making no difference We taking shots, got him pimping Look at these pastors leading the jakes They ain't never been valid Talking about Catholic On the corner, I step out the capsule Sakara, we act up Break to the Lord, cause it's about to get tragic When in Orlando, I ball like the magic Urban Gorilla, Javanchi, the fabric Trust in your highway, so everlasting How you doing, sister? How you doing, my brother? What's your... How you doing, family? Y'all believe in God? Yeah, of course. What? All right. Do y'all love God? My brother. King, you love God? Yeah. How you show God you love him? Mm. Treat others like, yeah, I you know, like I want to be treated. Okay. Treat, but how do you love God, though? Like, you got a, you got a wife? It's my fiance. It's your fiance, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You show her you love her by your actions, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what actions do you take to show that you love God? Right. I treat the next man, you know... Well, I help others, you know what I mean? Okay. Just try to live a good life. I got you. Everybody Watch this. My brother. I got you. This is the book of Romans, chapter 13 and 10. Bring it out! If you love someone, uh -huh. you will never do them wrong. Go ahead. To love then is to obey the whole law. To do what? To obey the whole law. So to love is to obey the laws of God because by obeying the laws of God, my actions are going to show you that I care for you, that I love you, I won't steal from you, I won't lie to you, I won't rob you, I'm going to keep the, everything. You feel what I'm saying? So to show that we love God is to keep the commandments. That's right. You know some of the commandments of God? Like the Ten Commandments, you mean? There's more than Ten Commandments. You can't be homosexual. You can't commit bestiality. That's two outside of the ten. You feel what I'm saying? So what we got to understand is that there's been a mindset that our oppressors have fed us to only believe, you know, it's only like Ten Commandments. All you got to do is just treat somebody good. But all of that is really subjective. Treating somebody good is subjective. I could The white man was treating us and they thought it was good. You feel what I'm saying? So we got to understand how to actually treat somebody is with the is with God's laws. You feel what I'm saying? So do you know any of God's laws? Like I asked. Nah. Give me one of them. Hey, you got one Thank you. I got you. I got you, bro. This is... This is 1 John chapter 5 and verse 3 in the CEV. Bring it out! We show our love for God by obeying His commandments. So, it's not just, you know, I'm going to treat somebody nice. You show God you love Him by obeying His commandments. It's just, it's that simple. You feel what I'm saying? Would you obey the commandments of God to show that you love God? Yeah, you don't want to be a hypocrite, right? Facts. And they are not hard to follow. It's a, and they're not hard to follow. So I'm going to give you one of the laws of God that's pretty easy to follow. Right? Watch this. This is Leviticus 11 and verse 7. Bring it out. And the swine, though he divide the hoof and be cloven footed, he cheweth not the cut, he is unclean to you. Right? That's, you know what swine is, right? Pork. Right? It's, God said the pork swine is unclean unto you. Go ahead. Verse 8. Of their flesh shall you not eat, uh -huh. and their carcass shall you not touch. So God said... You can't touch the dead body of a pig, and you cannot eat it. And you say you love God, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You love God? Yeah. So let me ask you, can you eat pork? Uh, off and on. Yeah. Off and on. So from yeah. this day forward, now that you know that God does not want you to eat pork, and you claim that you love God, what are you going to do? What's the next step you're going to take? Don't eat pork. That's oh, all right. praise to the most high, right? And, that, and that's why we, all praise to the that's why we out here. Because we got we to gotta recognize that the reason that we're in this oppression, the reason that we first fired, last hired, getting shot down in the street, our enemies are on top of us, is because we continuously break God's laws. I'm going to show you right. that. Give me Deuteronomy 20 and 45, right? And the GNT. Watch this. And get Hosea 7. This is Deuteronomy 28 and 45. Bring it out! All these disasters will come on you, and they will be with you until you are destroyed. Because you did not obey the Lord your God and keep all the laws that he gave you. Go ahead. So like it. They will be the evidence of God's judgment on you. So everything that we go through as a people is going to be the evidence of God's judgment on the Israelites that what? And your descendants. And who? And your descendants uh -huh. forever. So God said curses are going to come upon the Israelites and their descendants forever because we break God's laws. And we see the curses happening to us as the black and Hispanic community, knowing that, look, boom, we are these people. I'm gonna show you, give, give us 43. Oh, oh, get, no, get this, get this, get this, get this. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, that's crazy. God, this, this is um, Daniel 9 and 11 uh -huh. in the CEV. Uh -huh. Bring it out! Everyone in Israel has stubbornly refused to obey your law. Uh -huh. And so the curses 
are written by your servant Moses has fallen upon us. So, so, so hundreds of years later, the same we've been saying the same thing. When God gave the, the, the commandments to Moses to give to the Israelites, he said, listen, these curses or these blessings are going to happen if you don't obey the commandments. And we were disobeying God's commandments and realizing that all the curses was upon us. Going through slavery, captivity, all of that is right there in the Bible. And I'm going to show you more. Watch this. They used to use the Bible against us. This is the thing. They didn't use the Bible against us because we weren't allowed to read and write. They selected a, a particular groups of people, raised them up in the church, and they give us a slave Bible. You can look it, look it up. It's called a slave Bible. It's just certain verses taken out of context and fed to you. I can really tell you whatever I want and say it's from the Bible, but not reading. We actually reading it. That's you feel what I'm saying? I'm going to show you something real quick before you get. I got a dip though, man. But I appreciate the All right, listen. Check out the information. Remember that pork. No pork. Love God like you love your fiance, bro. All right, with your actions. All right, oh, praise. You can finish this up. Verse 12. You warned us and our leaders that Jerusalem would suffer the worst disaster in human history. Uh -huh. And you did exactly as you had threatened. And you did what? And you did exactly how you had as you had threatened. It's, so God was going to put the Israelites through the worst disaster in human history. And we see slavery, uh, um, colonization, going through the same um, things and sufferings for the past half a millennium. Understanding that nobody else in the world has gone through these things. That's how we're able to pinpoint and recognize that black, Hispanic, Native, and Seminole Indian people are emphatically, without a shadow of a doubt, the Israelites of the Bible, the real Jews. All right, go ahead. This is Jeremiah 15 and 8 in the GNT. Bring it out. There are more widows in your land than grains of sand by the sea, and I killed your young men in their prime. And I did what? I killed your young men in their prime. Is it not a fact that young black and Hispanic men, sis, 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 come on, let me talk to you real quick. Both, both, you don't got to be scared. We, well, you don't got to be scared. You can't leave your friend by yourself. Come on. Hey, give him a round of applause. We want, we want you to feel, we want you to feel, look, look, you're a star right now. We want you to feel comfortable. We, all of us, we love you. We are here for y'all. You know what I'm saying? We are here to uplift the hearts of black and Hispanic people. That's right. So. What's your stance on God? Um, I love him. I worship him every day. I'm okay. Caribbean, so... Where you from? Jamaica. Okay, me too. Yeah. I heard you. You? I'm not Caribbean, no. Oh, where you from? Here. You from here? Okay, 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 I got you. Go ahead. So, yeah, you know Caribbeans are, like, really heavy into spirituality in general. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I grew up around God, worshiping God and Jesus. So. Okay, okay, all right. So you say you love God, you worship Him every day. So what actions do you take to show that you love God? Well, I'm not gonna lie, I'm gonna keep it real. I don't do as much as I should. Okay. I do pray, but I do, I can not say that I do sometimes take advantage of that, and I don't do as much as I should, like I said. All right, so if I was to, if I was to show you, if I was to show you in the Bible, you know, certain things that we have to do as a people, would you take that next step to do it for God to show that you really love Him? For sure, I, I feel like He brought me here now. Like, that's a fact. Give me the opportunity to tell you for right. That's 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 a fact. God definitely did bring you out here and give me. Um, what is it? This is Proverbs chapter twenty, verse twenty-four. Bring it out. Man's goings are of the Lord. How? Can a man then understand his own way? So the Bible says that man's goings is of the Most High God. Everything that we do is ordained by the Most High. So yes, that's a fact that God brought you here to listen to this word so you could change your life for the better. You know what I'm saying? You too, my brother. God brought you right here so you could change your life for the better. God. This is Proverbs 16 and verse 9. Uh -huh. no. A man's heart devises his way. Right, so we could think our mind, because the word heart in the Hebrew is live. Our mind, we could think, you know, I'm going to do this to him. I'm going to wake up. I'm going to go do the laundry. I'm going to go to the store. I'm going to do this. But, but the Lord directs his steps. God is the one that's directing his steps. You feel what I'm saying? We could think what we're going to do all we want, but God is the one that's going to lead us into the right path. Right? What's your ethnicity, my brother? What? What's your ethnicity? What? Mexican. Are you Mexican? All right, boom. Right? So what we, our teaching is black, Hispanic, Native, and similar Indians that we are the true Jews of the Bible, and we have to keep God's commandments and uphold the principles and morals that God gave us in order to better our that's communities and a better our okay. situations that we go through. Go ahead. This is Jeremiah 10 and 23 in the GNT. Bring it out. Lord, Lord, I know that no one is, in the, is the master of his own destiny. No person has control over his own life. Right, nobody has control over his own life. All of it is in the hands of the Most High God, and that's why you're here today. Y'all like seafood? Not really, though. No. You don't eat bacon, sir? 
I don't eat pig. No, you don't eat pig? What's that? Bacon. Not, well, you, you, you don't know that. But that's a Trinidadian thing. Big? Big, yeah. No, I never heard of big. It's, like, like, it's like dumpling. Oh, dumpling? Yeah. But like fried dumpling, but like. Okay, yeah, I eat dumpling. Y'all don't eat seafood? You eat seafood? Yeah. Yeah? You love God? Yeah. Yeah? Watch this. I'm going to show you something in the Bible real quick. This is Leviticus 11 and 9. Uh -huh. you know? These shall you <laughs> These shall you eat of all that are in the water. Whatsoever have fins and scales in the waters and the seas and the rivers, them shall you eat. Uh -huh. so, Whatever has fins and scales in the waters, that's what God said we could eat. What has fins and scales? Fish, salmon, snapper, porgy, right? But shrimp don't have scales and fins. Shark don't have scales and fins. Lobster, I'm saying, oh, they got fins. But no they don't have both. You know what I'm saying? God said they have to have both. And you say you love God, right? So what are yeah. you going to do? If God said you can't eat it, God told you you can't eat it. So God, what are you going to do now? I want to ask you something. No, uh, well, uh, well, no. I answer that question first, what? and then I'm going to answer your question. Which is the question again, because... I, God said you can't eat anything in the water that doesn't have fins and scales. Okay. Shrimp, crab, lobster, stuff like that. What are you going to do? Stop eating, you know? Okay. I respect that. Now you can ask, now you can ask your question, bro. Because we got to... We gotta, wait, real quick. For everybody, though, we got to understand, every time we take... Every time we eat shrimp, crabs, lobster, and we take the the filters of the ocean out of it, there is black and Hispanic kids without clean water. So we're harming our own people by disobeying God's laws. That's why it's important for black and Hispanics to keep God's laws to better our living situation. We're going to ask you a question. I want to ask you, what does God want to tell me now? Now? Give me Matthew 19 and 16. I got you. Give me Matthew 4 and 17. <clears throat> this is the book of Matthew, chapter 4. Listen, check out the flyer. We love you. We're the real Jews. And you got to keep God's commandments. No pork, no lobster, no shrimp. All right, check the flyer out, though. This is Matthew 4, verse 17. Bring it out. From that time, Yahweh Shai, like from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent. What? Repent. What you gotta do? Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You said the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Liberation for black and Hispanic people is not. So what you gotta do is repent and keep God's laws. That's what I'm right. saying today. Okay. Understand? So I'm gonna teach you some of God's laws real quick. Give me. Um, I got. I got you. I got you. You love God, right? So you will change for God. Absolutely. You you heard what we read earlier? No shrimp. No crabs. No lobster. You get that, right? Yeah. You, you like those things? I don't. Why don't you work with it, bro? <laughs> <laughs> no, let me give you one more verse. Let me give you one more verse. Have you side right here. I got it. This is Matthew 19 and 16. Yeah. And behold, one, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may uh, have eternal life? Uh -huh. that, we, that we have eternal life. I will have to get in the kingdom of heaven. Go ahead. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. But if thou will enter into life, if you want the kingdom of heaven, if you want black and Hispanic people to finally be safe and out of oppression, what do you got to do? Keep the commandments. Do what? Keep the commandments. What? Keep the commandments. You got to keep the commandments of God. All right? No shrimp. All right? All right. Check out the fly, check the information, call the number, all of that. All right, go ahead, go ahead. This is Matthew. Uh, pay, pay attention to this, sis. Watch this. This is Matthew 17 and 17 in the MSG. Jesus said, what a generation. Sis, where you going? Give me meditation four and two. He said, teach me. And left. Go ahead. <laughs> Matthew 17 and 17 in the uh, uh, MSG. Jesus said, what a generation. No sense of God. No what? No sense of God. The generation we're living in, we have no sense of God. Black people, we got to understand. We got to separate from our oppressors, come back to our God so we can get our people out of the conditions that we go through. We got to understand that everything in life is bigger than ourselves and we got to look at our people and help our people. But the only way to help our people is by coming back to God. That's right. Because we, whatever the stuff we've been trying, Christianity, religion, all of these things have not been helping black people. So what we need to do is come together and come back to the Most High and, and trueness and His laws. That's it. 
Go ahead, go ahead, read. What a generation. Uh -huh. No sense of God. No sense of what? No sense of God. And you have no focus in your life. And you have what? And you have no focus in your life. Everybody's everybody's wavering. They don't know what to do. They hide, they cold, they in, they out. Everybody is focused on the wrong things and not focus on liberation for our people. Nobody really cares about the black and Hispanic community. We got to understand that if we come together and come back to our God, we're finally going to be, get that, you're finally going to get that Benz that you want. You're finally going to get that land, that house that you want. You're finally going to get everything in life that you need because God is going to give it to you. God is going to give us the kingdom of heaven because, and if we come back to him, right? Go ahead. No. This is Lamentation yeah. chapter 4, verse 17. Uh -huh. As for us, mm -hmm. our eyes as yet failed for a vain, for our vain help. Uh -huh. In our watching, we have watched for a nation. The Bible says our eyes have failed. In what? We have, it's like it, in our watching. No, no, no. As, for as for us, our eyes as yet failed for our vain help. For our vain help. We have no focus because our, and our eyes have failed for the vain help. We look into other people to try to help our situation. We're looking for people that raped, robbed, murdered us, and look into them so we can be equal with them, so we can be on an equal footing with them. My brother, my brother, with the book bag. My brother, you, you love black people, bro? Yeah. You, you, dime me up, dime me up. Come, pull up, pull up, pull up. What's up, what's up, man? Words. You love black people, right? Come here, come here, come here. How do you show black people you love them? self-love okay and encouraging everybody to love each other like take care of each other all provide for your family copy copy you believe in god yeah you do you do okay what's what's god's name yeah you say yeah okay uh, you close his name is yahweh you feel what i'm saying god right. spoke to us when he read so what we teaching right that black and hispanic people that we are the real jews of the bible the hebrew israelites so we talk to God, we speak in Hebrew, and his name is in Hebrew, his name is Yahweh. Feel what I'm saying? Yah, that's short, but it's really Yahweh. But watch this. I'm going to show you something in the Bible real quick. This is 1 John 5 and 2 in the CEB. If you love and obey God, we know we love each other. You say, you know, you treat people right, you teach them self-love, ah, ah. But we know we love each other when we love God. Go ahead, read it again. If we love and obey God, and do what? And obey God. We know we love each other. So when we love and obey God, that's how you know we love each other. So what we have to understand is how to obey God. Because have any has anybody taught you how to obey God? Nah, what's your, what's your ethnicity? Uh, African American. They, we haven't even been taught our true identity. Right. Let alone how to obey God. Right. Because African American, that's Africa and America. That's two countries, bro. They called Jesse Jackson in, 18, in 1980s. That's when they gave it to you. Your dad is probably, your mom and dad is probably older than that. Older than that, older than that, um, that term that they put, that we are accompanied by. You feel what I'm saying? So what we got to understand is that we are not African American. We not black. Black is the color of the straps in your book bag. You know what I'm saying? We, we got to come back to God, understand we're the real Jews of the Bible, and that we have to keep the commandments. Right. You feel what I'm saying? That's how you show you love black people. Because if I'm, if I don't keep God's laws, I'm going to be harming myself, and if I harm myself, then how can I love anybody else? Right. You feel what I'm saying? No cap. <laughs> no cap. All right, watch. Let me show you something else. Watch this. Oh, no. Give me, um... <laughs> Bring it out! Come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. Don't walk away, bro. Come here, come here. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. What you got to do today? What you got to do today? See, just walking around. All right, bro. You don't got time for God. Go ahead, I should pull up and learn about God. That's right. What you gonna wait? What's today? Saturday? What you gonna wait till tomorrow? To go and learn, learn nothing in the church? Uh, what you rather do? Walk around and do nothing or learn how to be closer with your God? Right. I mean, I, 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 always, I already like try to stay uh, stay close to God. Like, how? As possible. Like, by, through prayer and like, you know, but, but let me show you something real quick, right? Give me Proverbs 28 verse 9, right? You said through prayer. All right, watch this. This is Proverbs 28 and verse 9. Wow. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, mm -hmm. even his prayer 
shall be an abomination. Right, we trying to teach you the laws of God, and you walking away. You trying to turn your ear to the laws of God. God is not going to hear your prayers, bro. So you can pray all you want, but God's not listening to you. So you want God to listen to you, or you don't want God to listen to you? How come he's not listening? He said what? He's not listening when we don't listen to his laws. Right. You feel what I'm saying? You got parents, right? Obviously. When I was younger and I did not disobey my dad or my mom, and I would ask him for you, let me go to the park, let me get some money for this, my dad would sit there and won't listen to me at all. It's the same thing God is doing with us when we break his commandments. You understand? That's right. Do you know some of the commandments of God? Do you know what God requires of you to do? You say you're so close to God. You try to stay close to him. What does God require of you to do? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. But, and that's that's why it's important that you stay here and learn about it. Because you're not going to learn about it nowhere else. Right. Nobody else is going to take the time out their day to come out and teach you for real. And if they did, we would have been had it. Go ahead. Give me Isaiah 30 and 20, right? It's Sirach 5 and 15 in the CB. Don't be ignorant in matters large or small. Don't be ignorant in matters large or or small, you're gonna you're gonna wanna have to have an answer for everything. You feel what I'm saying? Like if I got a question, you'll be able to answer it. Right? Us up here, we study everything. And we understand that by studying, we can prove ourselves to God and show ourselves like you know what I'm saying, we know what we do, we know we know what we're talking about, and we're able to give somebody an answer. And you should be like that too. Because right. people are gonna be looking up to you and you're gonna wanna have be lead as an example. You feel what I'm saying? You can't lead as an example if you don't know nothing about God. Verse 10, be firmly grounded in your understanding. Be what? Be firmly grounded in your understanding. You got to be firmly grounded. You over here like this. You got to, you know what I'm saying? Be grounded. You feel me? Good. Um, this is Deuteronomy. Oh. That was, Isaiah, okay. yeah. I, no, Isaiah, Isaiah, this is Isaiah chapter 30, verse 20. Mm -hmm. right. And though the Lord give you the bread of adversity mm -hmm. and the water of affliction. Are you tired of oppression happening to black people? You tired of it? Uh, yeah, so yeah, so yeah. the Bible says, although God gave us the bread of adversity, although we went through slavery, went through this, and God colonized as a people, go ahead. Yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore. So your teachers, we're not going to be hiding anymore. Go ahead. But thine eyes shall see thy teachers. Are you going to see your teachers? Go ahead. And thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, uh -huh. This is the way. This is what? This is the way. Uh -huh. Walk you in it. Said, walk you in it. This is the way and this is the way you got to walk. You got to walk in the laws of God. Right. Second John right. 1 and verse 6. It's, imp it's imperative because we got to understand that by breaking God's laws is why we're going through black and Hispanic oppression. That's that right. you're tired of. And I'm going to show you that. Give me, go back to Daniel 9 and verse 11. Right? Watch this. I'm going to show you. But this, this is Daniel 9 uh -huh. and verse 11. Second John 1. Oh, yeah, read it, read it. This is the book of 2 John, uh -huh. chapter 1, verse 6. No. And this is love. And this is love. Go ahead. That we walk after his commandments. Right, you love yourself? This is love. You walk after his commandments. That's what you got to do, bro. You feel what I'm saying? So if you love God, you're going to walk in that right path. You're not going to walk astray. Well, go ahead. Read this. This is Daniel 9 and 11 in the CV. Everyone in Israel stubbornly refused to obey your law. So the curses written by your servant Moses have fallen upon us. And you warned us, our leaders, that Jerusalem will suffer the worst disaster in human history. So God warned us and our leaders that black people will suffer the worst disaster in human history. Do you agree that slavery is one of the worst things to happen? in the world like the slavery that we went through yeah sound about right yeah okay i think i think they they stole our land they, did, they definitely did steal our land and then they kicked us out and brought us over here you feel what i'm saying we went through the worst thing ever but god said it was going to happen if he break his commandments and you want our oppression to stop right so what do you think we got to do that's why we out here right now. No, that's why we out here right now, and that's why you out here learning right now. You know what I'm saying? We got to keep the commandments. That's right. That's it. You feel what I'm saying? Go ahead. This is Lamentations 5 and 2 in the CEV. Foreigners and strangers have taken our land. See, everything you're saying, it's been in the Bible. You feel me? That's why we got to come to the Bible to get the real answers, to get the true understanding of why we go, what we go through, and how to get out of the situations that we're in right now. 
You feel what I'm saying? Because nobody else is going to teach you this. It shows you through our history and history we have leaders rise up and they haven't done nothing. Nothing's changed. You feel what I'm saying? It's still the same thing. We're still getting oppressed. Niggas is still having um, uh, uh, laws that in, in um, infrastructures and things that structurally racist towards our people. You feel what I'm saying? Dealing with housing, wealth, education, the media, everything we got. Everything we see in America is pushing something that's turning a gear that's affecting black people negatively, and we got to push those gears back and shy away from that. The only way to do that is by gathering together. And obeying the laws of God so God can actually hear our prayers and save us out of his hellhole. You feel what I'm saying? All right, I'm gonna show you one 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 law of God that I know you can keep. Go ahead. Give me um okay. this is the this is Numbers 15 and chapter 38. Sl Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 27. You shall not round the corners of your heads. Neither shalt thou mar the corners of thy beard. Right. You can't shave your beard. You can't shave your head. Right. That's what God said. Right. Let me that face, bro. It's weird. Yeah, yeah, How you know the difference between a lion and a lioness? The mane, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. So if, if, the, if a lion shaved the mane, you're going to know it's a male lion? No. You feel what I'm saying? I'm young. I don't got a beard. But you see, brothers up here, they got beards, you feel what I'm saying? We're men, we gotta have the beard on our face. That's right. You feel me? And even our oppressors, they put the commercials on TV, had the black man shave his face so you can look effeminate. You walk in the job with a beard, oh no, you gotta shave it. They want us to look effeminate because they're scared of our masculinity. But God told us that we gotta keep our beard. And I know you can grow a beard, I see it on your face. That's right, that's right. Now, bro, it's right there, bro, what do you mean? You got more than me. Yeah, well, you gotta grow it to get like them. You see me? Look, I'm look. I got a thing where I'm not even shaving it, bro. Respect my shit coming in. You feel me? Respect. <laughs> well, listen, you say you love God, though, right? Yeah. God said you can't shave your beard. Are you gonna shave your beard? God told you you can't shave your beard. I mean, I'm gonna shave and then I'm gonna I'm gonna say sorry if I if I oh. shave. I'm gonna just be like. So let me ask you a question. If I just if somebody ran up to you and punched you in your mouth and be like, oh, I'm sorry, bro, you're going to forget them? You're going to be like, oh, no, you that good. You, you good. We could be friends. You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna do that? That's not the same. That's it is the same. same. God told you to do something, and you said, listen, I don't really care what you said. I'm going to do it, and I'm going to just say sorry. You think God is going to listen to you? Well, yeah, all right, that's a, but that's in the Bible. It, we just, oh, we're going to read it again. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, in, it's in the Bible. Bro. All right, all right, in the Bible, though, the Bible is written by them. By who? By the Give me by some of the Psalms 1 and verse 5. Oh. I'm going to show you that. How do you, learn, how do you know about God? I, how do you know about God? From, I learned from, from the Bible. Why? So why? So you telling me you, you wholeheartedly believe in something even though it came from your oppressors? Nah. You just said the Bible came from... You just said the white man wrote the Bible. Right. Why are you believing in the God if the white man wrote the Bible? Right. Let's be for real. Because that's how you know about God. Nah, 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 cause I, nah, that's not why I believe in God, but that's, that's what I first learned about God. Oh, okay, but you wouldn't know about God if it wasn't for the Bible. Right. Like you, the Bible says you have to have, you have to be grounded in your understanding. Right. That's not grounded. They mean, I believe in God that I learned from the Bible, but the Bible is written by the white man. Why would you believe in it in the first place then? Talk about it. Believe in something else. That's right. I'm going to show you that the white man did not write the Bible. I don't know who told you that. That's not true. I'm going to show you. Go ahead. This is Sons of Solomon 1 and 5. This is the author in the Bible. Go ahead. Women of Jerusalem, I am dark and beautiful. I'm what? I am dark and beautiful. She said, I'm dark and beautiful. Did the white man write that? No, no, let me know. Let me hear it. Did the white man write that? Is the white man black and beautiful? Are they? Look at them. Where they at? Look at her. She black and beautiful? With the blonde hair, where's another white lady at? This man, Israelites are here. Oh, praises. I'll ask you a question. This is an author in the Bible. I like, I like my black queens. Yeah. Of course. I'm saying, an author in the Bible is saying, I'm dark and I'm beautiful. She's writing this. This is an author in the Bible. But you said the white man wrote the Bible. Right. How, why would, how can the white man write the Bible if authors in the Bible are saying that they're black? Give me Revelation 1 and 14. This is Revelation chapter 1. In verse 14, his head and his hairs 
We're white like wool, uh -huh. as white as snow. As white as snow, just like that powerful brother beard, white and woolly. Go ahead, this is how Jesus Christ looked like, like that brother with the hat. Go ahead. And his eyes uh -huh. were as a flame of fire. Uh huh. And his feet uh -huh. like unto fine brass. What color is brass? Brown. Brown. Jesus Christ's feet in the Bible documented is brown. How? How brown? As if they burned in a furnace. So the Bible said that Christ is black. If the white man wrote the Bible, why would they leave that in there? Mm. No. No. Why would they leave it in there but then paint this as right. Jesus Christ? That makes sense to you? That's what I thought. I that, thought you see, but guess what? You thought wrong. That's right. You thought wrong. They didn't change the Bible. They just have it in their little, you know, they post and just tell you nonsense and paint that. But the Bible is written by black and Hispanic people, bro, by the Israelites, us. That's what the Bible is written by. For black people and by black people. And that's it. Where did you learn that the white man wrote the Bible, though? Where you got the information from? Uh, it just seemed like it from, what like, seems like it? Let me know. Like, because it's from, it's from the, the, the church, the churches in Europe and shit. So the Europeans wrote the Bible. You know, you know black people were rulers in Europe, right? Uh, yeah. And there's black images over there, rulers in Europe. Yeah, y'all right, y'all right. And it didn't, it, the Bible didn't come from the church. Council of Carthage, the, what was it, the canon, was assembled in Carthage. You know where Carthage is at? Northern Africa. Right. Africa, where black people are from. The Bible was compiled by black people, the Bible was written by black people, for black people. Whatever lie you heard did not come from the Bible. Right. So God, who also is black, go ahead, I'm going to show you. Right. It's Revelation chapter 4, verse 2. Right. And immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Who sits on the throne in heaven? God. God. Go ahead. And he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sardine stone. Right, and this is what a, this is what a jasper and sardine stone looks like. That's what it looks like. God is black. Christ is black. The authors in the Bible are black. Right. This is our book. Nobody else can take this book and try to teach you it, bro. That's why we out here right now. That's why I told you your eyes are going to see your teachers and going to tell you that this is the way. This is the only way because we, we are the authors of this Bible, bro. And if God told you that you can't shave your beard and you claim that you love God, why would you shave your beard? Right. That means you're a liar, bro. And you don't love God. Now you got me. You got I got you? Okay, so what are you going to do now? Double, double, man. You gonna still shave? Nah, nah, y'all finna see me next time. Ah, I'm gonna pray to the most high. Alright, alright, alright. Look, watch it. Give me some 15 to 10. Alright. Because it, it, it's important. Because we out here to dispel the lies that our oppressors have pushed on our people. That's just a mindset. Give me that um, tear down strong Just look it up. Watch this. Go ahead. This is Luke chapter 15 and verse 10. Uh -huh. yeah. Likewise, I say unto you, mm -hmm. there is joy in the presence of the angels of God. Over one sinner, what? Over what? one sinner uh -huh. that repented. So there's joy in the, in the presence and the angels of God in heaven over one people that repent of repenting. You feel what I'm saying? I think it's sturdy right now, because you're saying you're not going to shave your beard. We got to understand right. that once you under once you realize and know how to keep God's laws, it's one foot forward for black oppression and Hispanic oppression to stop. That's right. You feel what I'm saying? Because it really starts with you. It started with one of us. And now look how much of us it is. And now we just need you right there. You feel me? Doing the same thing, pushing the same message, pushing the positivity and bringing upliftment to our community because nobody else is going to do it but us. And we want you to be a part of it. You feel what I'm saying? This is St. John chapter 14 and verse 15. If you love me, if you love God, God, keep my command. What? Keep my command. Got to keep the commandments. You feel what I'm saying? That beard is one of the commandments. Give me the book. Read this. This is 2 Corinthians 10 and verse, uh, where is that? Let's see this. Come on, this is Leviticus chapter 11 and verse 7. We're in the GT. It says, 
This is Leviticus 11 and verse 7 in the GNT. Do not eat pigs. <laughs> Do not what? Do not <laughs> eat pigs. God said we can't eat pigs. You can't eat no bacon and cheese. You can't eat salami. You can't eat ham. No pepperoni. How you feel about that? Be honest. You like pig? You like pork? Nah. So that's easy, right? You don't have to eat pork. That's late, bro. God said, listen, if God said to do something, bro, I'm going to just do it. You feel what I'm saying? We, bro, we, you, got, you got a job? Yeah, that's easy. That's Your manager tells you to do something, you do it. That's right. So if God tells me to do something, I'm going to just do it, bro. You're already listening to the damn, your manager's at your job, and they nobody. They don't even write your check. You feel me? So we got to we gotta put God over everybody and listen to the most high. Don't shave your beard. No pork. You, eat, you like seafood? Nah? All right, well, shrimp, crab, lobster, all of that garbage, God said that we can't eat that. You feel what I'm saying? You don't even like that anyway, so it should, that should not be hard for you. In 2 Corinthians 10 and 4, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through, the, through God to the pulling down of strongholds. To the what? To the pulling down of strongholds. Right, that's what I'm here to do, to pull down the strongholds and the mindset of black and Hispanic people that has been tainted by this image, tainted by the words that our oppressors have given to us. You feel what I'm saying? We, we gotta, we gotta take what they say with a grain of salt. You gotta really examine what they speak because when they speak to us, it's really all lies, right? Give me Psalm 58 and verse. Read this first. This is it's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse, verse 12. Thou shalt make thee fringes upon the four quarters of thy vesture. The Bible says you gotta have fringes. On your body. You see the fringes we got on the body? Everybody over here, we got fringes. And it's talking about these, look. So you got to get you some of this. Every every culture in the world, right? Every culture has their own aesthetics. You look at the Indians, they got their own apparel. You look at the, the Arabics, they got their own apparel. You look at the Chinese, the Japanese, the Korean. You look at the, the South African. A lot. Everybody else in the world has their a certain custom and aesthetics to them. But when you look at black and Hispanic people, we all over the place. Right. We got to understand, God gave us this aesthetics, bro. You feel me? KTO. Those are my... Nah, let me tell you. Right, you got to understand that God gave us drip. Look at, look at the brothers, bro. We dripped out. Yeah. Keeping God's laws. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't nobody wearing no damn hot-ass, long-ass, black shit. Bro, that's bad. You feel what I'm saying? But look at them. They do it for a false God. They follow whatever for a false God. We got to follow God's laws for the real, true, living God that's going to save us out of the things that we go through. That's right. You feel me? So from this day forward, how do you look at the Bible? You know, after everything I said. I'll, I'll read it. I'll, You'll read it? I'll, I'll read it. I'll read it. I, you got to understand because this, this is your heritage. This is your history. Give me Joel 2 and 17 and give me a uh, Syrac 11 and 17. Watch this. I'm going to show you why it's important for you to read it and for you to follow the things that's inside of it. Go ahead. I got to read This is it. My fault. Give me one second. This is Joel 2 and, seven, two, two and 17. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch mm -hmm. and the altar. Mm -hmm. And let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, uh -huh. and give not thine heritage to reproach. Do what? And give not thine heritage to reproach. Don't give your heritage to a, a reproach. We got to understand, our heritage is the laws of God. You feel what I'm saying? Balenciagas, Mary Jeans. All of that, the, uh, the do-rag, I mean, I still wear my do-rag, but all of these other things that we think is black culture is not black culture. Everything that we do in our, everything we do in our communities is just what our oppressors allowed us to do. It's really that simple. We don't do anything really of our own free will. But what we have to do now is have the culture that God gave us. And the culture God gave us is what? Don't shave your beard, wear your fringes, don't eat the pork, keep the Sabbath, come on here and teach the people. That's the culture that we have. You feel me? Go ahead. This is Sirach, chapter 17, and verse 11. Beside this, he gave them knowledge mm -hmm. and the law of life for inheritance. Besides this, God gave you 
knowledge and the laws of life for your heritage. So your heritage, your culture is keeping the is keeping the laws of God. You feel me? And if you really want to, if you and if you understand that we are these people of this Bible, we are the people that go through the worst uh, um, disasters in human history. We are the people that God and the prophets have been prophesying about. We gotta turn that curse and keep God's laws. Feel me? This this is. This is Sirach 19 and verse 19. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life. Is the what? Is the doctrine of life. The doctrine of life. The only true understanding, the only true doctrine is the laws of God, bro. You feel what I'm saying? That's the only way black and Hispanic people need to be living. Under God's laws. Because that's the only way we're going to be able to actually show people that we love them. Because without, without God's laws... There's no morality, there's no principles, there's nothing that we have to uphold, there's no foundation, there's no structure that we're going to really stand on. You feel what I'm saying? We're going to follow Islam, follow Christianity, take pieces and pieces from here, and that's not how a community needs to be operating. We need to have one mind, right? Khan. And they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. Right? If you want that fruit of the tree of immortality... You need to come back to God. You need to come back, read this Bible, and keep God's law. Go ahead. It's John 14, John 4 and 14. But whosoever drinketh the water that I shall give him Because you look thirsty. We got water. You look thirsty, but we got to understand. Man shall not live by bread alone. But if you drink this water that we giving you, go ahead. Shall never thirst. So what? Shall never thirst. Never thirst, but your mind, your body, your soul is going to be at rest once you drink this water. Go ahead. <clears throat> But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water spring up into everlasting life. Right, and that water that that bet that water that's better than essential water is gonna go inside you and bring forth that everlasting life. You feel what I'm saying? So from this way forward, my brother, you gotta keep God's laws. Understand, listen, don't shave your beard, no pork, no shrimp, no lobster, none of that stuff. You feel me? If you really love God, and if you really love God, you got the fly? Yeah. You're gonna check out that fly, call the number, look at the YouTube, and get closer. And have a real relationship with the Most High. Right. All right. All right. So I'm about to pass it to the next exuberant and powerful speaker. And with that, I give all praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God, Yahweh, by Shimmy Al Shalom.